All right, we're back here now for turn two. But before we go on and do turn two, a uh, couple of errors to correct. Uh, if you'll recall, when Private Johnson was spotted, it was done so by an unknown enemy character. When that happens, you're actually supposed to check to see if that character is a real character or a dummy character. We did not do that at the time. That character was eventually spotted in turn by our uh, friendly characters and found to be a dummy character, and so it was removed at that time. However, if it was a dummy character that made the successful spotting uh, role on Private Johnson as it was, uh, that spotting never takes place. So what we need to do is move Private Johnson back to unspotted. Additionally, this character here was misplaced uh, a couple of turns back, should actually be right here. Neither instance does it change anything about the game. No other results need to be changed. Nothing else needs to be backtracked. All right, so we're ready to go with step two, or uh, turn two. Step number one, friendly card phase. We don't have just one card. There were no cards set aside. We don't have five cards. So what we need to do is we need to determine uh, uh, what we want to do here. And what we're going to do is we're going to play card number 27 right here. It is also an order card, which means we need to deal with that order. And that order says all friendly characters in A teams have plus one weapon skill this turn. Well, A team is able team, and we don't have any able team soldiers on the map, so that order does not apply. Our uh, uh, initiative numbers will be Charlie team 62 and Baker team 42. All right, so at this point, we need to go ahead and supply our orders. Um, not entirely sure here what I want to do with Charlie team. We've got to move. Uh, well, maybe we don't. I'm actually going to, with Private Walsh, I'm going to let them sit there with an aimed fire order, hoping that maybe characters will move into his sight and he can shoot. Um, with Corporal Thomas... Um, you know, I'm going to do the same thing, I, th I think. Actually, with Cor uh, Corporal Thomas, I'm going to choose Rapid Fire, uh, which is going to allow him to shoot in each impulse should the uh, opportunity arise. With Private Stubbs, I'm going to again use Run and Gun. He's not quite in a spot where he can shoot, so I'm going to use Run and Gun to get him to move up. And we'll go from there. With Baker team, they're not yet in position. They can't. They, they don't have any line of sight. And so for all three soldiers of Baker team, I'm going to go back and issue run and gun one more time. Uh, to Private Goldstein, Private Johnson, and Private Miller. All right. So that's the end of step two of the order of play, uh, the friendly order phase. That brings us to step three, which is the enemy card phase. Now, we did not do this last turn because of the special rules of the scenario. <clears throat> In this case, what we do is we will pull or draw one card for every soldier on the map. And if it's the first card for that soldier's team, that enemy character's team, it becomes the initiative card for that team. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw for red first, which would be the red character up here. And since this is the first card for red, it's going to be uh, also their initiative card. Their initiative will be 59. Now, that red character is in normal morale. In fact, all of our enemy characters are in normal morale. And he's in cover. He's in the hedge. And so we will look in the in cover normal he gets an aimed fire result. And again, since it's the first red, it goes on the initiative track. 
I will go ahead and issue an aimed fire order for that character. We're going to go to the red guy right next to him. He's also uh, in normal morale, but he's in the open in the cornfield. And in the open, normal, he gets sprint 5C. Now what that C means, and there could also be a G, is that if they are within four hexes of a spotted uh, friendly soldier, that order, instead of being a sprint five, could be changed to a charge or a uh, grenade. But he gets a sprint five, that means he's going to run and run quite fast right straight at me. We'll go to the red just to his right, still in the hedge. Uh, it's uh, normal morale, but he's in cover. So we look back here, in cover, normal, run and gun, 4-5. So we will give that character a run and gun, 4-5, as soon as I can find it. There's run and gun, 6-5, five, 4-5, five, right here. So this character gets run and gun, 4-5. This character right here is next. He's in the open. Remember, cornfields are considered open terrain. So in the open, normal, he gets a sneak four as his uh, order. So let me go ahead and find a sneak four. If I can find one here. I got lots of sneaks. Here we go, sneak four. So he'll get a sneak four order. We have one more red over here uh, in the clear, so he's in the clear, normal morale. In the open, normal aimed fire. So he also gets an aimed fire, but right now he really can't see anybody. And so that may be a turn or a, an order that doesn't do much. We're now gonna do the blue, and I'm gonna start, and I'm just gonna go right to left. There is no specific order listed in the rules to how to do this. So I'll start right here. Again, since this is the first blue order, it'll also be the initiative, and the initiative for blue will be 29. That character is in uh, open and normal, so he gets a sneak 5-6 order. And I'll also make that the uh, initiative card. So we need a sneak 5-6. Here we go. That means he's going to move, but he's going to do so carefully. I uh, will next go to the uh, uh, blue soldier in the cornfield. Again, in the open, normal, run and gun, 4C. Uh, he's not within four characters, so he's going to get a run and gun 4. All right, let me find run and gun. There we are, run and gun 5. Run and gun 6, we don't want that. Where is there's a running gun four? So that's him right here. Uh, we'll go next here. He's in the rocks, so he's in cover. In cover, normal, aimed fire, G. Well, again, he's not within four hexes of a friendly soldier, so that just becomes aimed fire. I'm going to go a little bit lower here down to the character that we moved. He's in the open. In the open, normal, run and gun, 5, 6, C. Uh, he's not within four characters, or four hexes. So he gets a run and gun, 5, 6. And that's this order right there. We'll go here next. He's also in the open. Normal, sneak, 5. So he gets a sneak, 5 order. Let me go ahead and find a sneak, 5 order. Here we go. And we've got one last enemy character to do an order for way up there in the hedge. He's in cover, normal sneak, 6-5. All right, so he also gets a sneak. It's a 6-5 sneak. We'll go ahead and, and put that order way up there. Every enemy character now has an order. And we've got one more part now to this step, and that'll take place down here on our mats. 
and that's setting up the initiative track. <clears throat> Our initiative values for this turn are blue with 29 will go first. Uh, Baker with 42 will go second. Red with 59 will go third. And fourth will be Charlie Team at 62. So our order for the four impulses this turn will be Blue Team, Baker Team, Red Team, Charlie Team. All right, that's the end of step three. We now move on to the action phase, which is again back up here on the map. And we'll start with Blue Team. Okay, and when we do orders in the action phase, it starts from top to bottom. And then whoever's closest, this guy is the top most. He's got a sneak order, which is zero, so he does nothing. Next, we have run and gun four. Uh, so it's uh, run and gun has a black one in the first impulse, so that's a move order. He moves four, which is in this direction. Next is going to be this guy. He has a sneak, which is zero, so he does nothing. This guy is next, aimed fire, which is zero for the first impulse. He does nothing. We now have run and gun five, six. And all of these characters, there's no spotting possible. So I'm going through them rather quick. Run and gun five, six. So he moves in direction five for the first impulse, which is straight down. Uh, everything this way is blocked by rocks. Everything this way is blocked by trees, rocks, and the house. So he's done. And finally, we have a sneak, which is zero, so he's done. Blue team is done with their first impulse. We now go to Baker team. They all have run and gun. Uh, so uh, I'm going to move Private Johnson into the hedge uh, because uh, there's no line of sight. We're not going to do any spotting. Private Goldstein, I'm going to move into the tree. Uh, again, no, no, no possible spotting here, I don't think. No, because a tree will be in the way. And Private Miller, I'm going to move up into the logs. Again, up in this area. Uh, everything except perhaps this guy here. And when I measure that, it goes through the rocks, so he can't see that guy either. Baker team is done. We now go to the red team. We'll start up here. These guys are both the same distance, but this guy's a little closer. He's got aimed fire, which is zero. So he cannot uh, uh, shoot. However, we may be able to do a little bit of, of spotting, but no, because this hedge here is in the way. So his order is zero. He doesn't move. We have a sprint one. So he sprints one in the direction of five. So he moves down one. No line of sight. And so no spotting. Next up is run and gun, four or five. He moves in direction four, which is right here, into the road. Now let's take a look. And absolutely, we have line of sight to Private Miller. So let's take a look at a spotting check. Uh, there is logs in the way, but they both have running guns, so the logs aren't going to matter. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, a range of nine is no modifier. We have run and gun in the logs for the uh, target. Run and gun in logs is a minus one modifier. So we have a minus one modifier with a troop quality of four. That means we need a three or less. And when we roll, we get a four, so that is a failed uh, uh, spotting check. This character is now done. We now move to this character. He's got a sneak order, which is zero in the first impulse. And finally, and there's no uh, uh, line of sight, this is the last character for red. Uh, aimed fire, which is zero. No line of sight, so that's it for red team in Impulse 1. Our final team to act in Impulse 1 will be Charlie team. We've got aimed fire. He can't see anybody. We've already determined there's no line of sight, so he doesn't move. He doesn't do anything. Corporal Thomas has rapid fire. 
meaning he would fire in every uh, impulse if he could see somebody, but from right here, he can't see anybody. So not only does he not fire, he doesn't spot check, which brings us to Private Stubbs. Now, Private Stubbs is going to move, and I'm going to move him right here to 2211. What that does is, is that opens up that whole cornfield to his line of sight. These three soldiers here are absolutely in his line of sight. And we'll check here for him, and he is as well. So all four of these soldiers, enemy uh, characters, are within Private Stubbs's line of sight. So we'll need to do a spotting check on all four of them. First, we'll do the blue, which is two hexes away. A distance of two hexes, you'll see, is a plus one modifier. So we've got plus one. However, the character is doing a sneak order in the cornfield. Sneak in the field is a minus two modifier. So combined, that's a minus one modifier on a troop quality of six. So with Private Stubbs, we need a five or less. He rolls a zero. So that is a successful spot of this blue character. We flip it over to find it's another dummy character and is removed from the game. So we've now removed two dummy characters uh, of enemy characters from the game. They're down to 10. Continuing on with the spotting, next we'll go here. One, two, that's one, two, three, four distance. That is also a plus one modifier. He's also got a sneak in the grass or in the, the field, so that's a minus two. We're back again to a, a minus one modifier for Stubbs on a troop quality of six, meaning he needs a five or a less. He rolls an eight. So this soldier here, this enemy character, is not spotted. We go to the next spotter. That is also four hexes for a plus one modifier. But this character has got a sprint order in the field. And that is a zero modifier. So we've got a plus one instead of a minus one modifier this time for Stubbs. His troop quality is six. A plus one modifier is seven. We need a seven or a less. He rolls a one. So that character is also now spotted. So we'll flip him over. And we find a soldier. Our first known enemy soldier. And that is uh, Soldat Winkler. I think that's his name. Winkler. He is now spotted, which means next turn, Stubbs can shoot at him. And then finally, the aimed fire soldier up there. Uh, we've already determined there is indeed line of sight. That is a, a distance of six. However, uh, it's... No modifier, aimed fire in a hedge is a minus one modifier, which brings that down to five. We roll, it's a zero, so that's also a successful spot. We flip the, the character here, that's a, also a soldier, and that is Soldat Jung, or Young, and he had aimed fire. All right, so that's the end of uh, Charlie Team's impulse, and that is the end of impulse number one here in turn number two. Quite a bit happened there. Several spot checks happened. We're starting, we're getting into the uh, area where we're going to actually start to have firefights. So we moved to impulse two. Again, blue team goes first in impulse two. Start here at the top, we have a sneak 6-5. So he sneaks into the cornfield, uh, no line of sight. We have run and gun 4. Okay. Uh, I don't believe he has any line of sight. I'm just looking here real quick to be certain. And I don't see any line of sight. Um... And since there's no line of sight, no enemy character, he moves again. And he's got a four option, which again is into the lower right. So he moves here. 
in his second impulse. Uh, looking here, almost has line of sight except for this hedge. We have aimed fire. Uh, he has no line of sight in this direction. No line of sight in this direction. So he does nothing. Next will be this soldier here who has a sneak five. He seeks, sneaks down to this hedge. We're getting awfully close to being able to have line of sight here. And in fact, let's take a look. And he in fact does have line of sight to Private Goldstein. And so we'll do a spot check. It's one, two, three, four, five. A, a, a range of five is no modifier. He's at run and gun in a tree. That's no modifier. And so his troop quality is four. We roll a seven, no spotting. Last but least here in a second, uh, we have a run and gun. We have no uh, line of sight, so he can't shoot. So therefore he has to move, and he moves in direction five to the house. All right, so let's check here now. We may have, well, the line of sight over here is blocked by the trees, so nothing there. The line of sight to Private Johnson is blocked by the hedge, but we do have line of sight to Private Goldstein. So we'll do another spotting check. That is a distance of four, which is a plus one modifier. We've already determined run and gun in the trees is uh, no modifier. So we have a plus one modifier with a troop quality of four. We roll an eight, no spotting. That's the end of blue team for this second impulse. All right, next up is Baker team down here. They all have gun. Um, well, let's see. We're going to start Private Miller. He has no known soldiers in his line of sight. Um, and so I believe that even though he's got a soldier in line of sight, it's not a known soldier. Let me just check on that to make sure he still runs, still moves here. If he does not have a visible known target, he must move instead. All right, so he's going to move. He's going to move straight up here into the logs. No line of sight here. No line of sight here. I don't know if he's got line of sight there. It sure looks like he has line of sight there because we've got aimed fire and run and gun. The logs aren't going to block. He also has line of sight here. So we have two spotting checks for Private Miller. We'll do uh, this one here in the stones first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's no ranged modifier. We have aimed fire in rocks. That is minus three on the modifier scale. So we've got a troop quality of four with a minus three modifier. We need a one or a less, we get a three. So no spotting there. However, going up to the soldier on the road, that's a distance of eight with no uh, no modifier because of that. He's got run and gun and open territory. That's a plus two modifier. A troop quality of four with a plus two modifier. I need a six or less. And I roll a zero. So that is absolutely a spotting that happens. So let's take a look at our soldier. And that is uh, an NCO actually. Uh, Gunther uh, is his name. But he's now spotted. That's the end of Private Miller's turn. We now have Private Goldstein. No known soldiers in line of sight. However, so he, so he has to move. I'm going to move him up into the tree, the front tree. He now has uh, this character here is within line of sight. This character here no longer is. The house blocks it. Stones block it there, stones block there, 
he's already spotted. None of the rest works. We have a line of sight check there. That is a distance of three, which is a plus one modifier. And we have a run and gun order in a building. So that's a minus two modifier. So together that's a minus one modifier on a troop quality of four. So we need a three or less. Comes up zero. So that is absolutely a sighting or a spotting. And we turn it over, and that is uh, uh, Private Schultz. Not Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes, but Private Schultz. He's now done. We now have Private Johnson. He has no known soldiers in sight, so he needs to move. He moves up one square here, or one hex. He's already spotted. He, I don't think, has line of sight, but let's take a look. You know what? No, this hex here is a little bit in the way, so no line of sight there. And so he's done. And that's the end of Baker team. But uh, we've now got several soldiers that are sighted, or several enemy characters. Next up is Red Team. We'll start up here with Aimed Fire. We don't have any known spotted U.S. or uh, friendly characters yet, so uh, there's no uh, shooting. However, can we do spotting? Well, not here. Absolutely here. Not down here, I don't think. I guess it's theoretically possible here Private Johnson or Private Goldstein could have line of sight up there and the answer is no this hedge is in the way so he's gonna do a spot check on private Stubbs not on Corporal Thomas and not on private Walsh so we've got one two three four five six actually he spotted so he can shoot I apologize no we, he can't shoot because private Stubbs is not yet known and it has to be a known spotted character so he's gonna do a spotting check on private Stubbs that's a distance of six, which is no modifier. Run and gun in the hedge is no modifier. And the troop quality is a troop quality of four. So we make the roll with no modifiers. He gets a zero. That means Private Stubbs is now spotted. And people can shoot at him. All right, the next red is this character here, and he sprints two. So he sprints two straight down because his direction is five. Uh, Private Stubbs is already spotted. He can't see here. He can't see here. So that's the end of that turn. This uh, character is next, run and gun one. Well, he can't see anybody spotted yet, so he has to move, and he moves in direction four. Now, as for spotting, can't spot over here. Uh, can't spot either of these two. I don't think he can spot there either. No, the, the stones are in the way. We now have a sneak four, which is in this order. Again, there's going to be no spotting going on. And now we have aimed fire right here. The only character that spotted is Stubbs. There's obviously a hedge in the way. And there's obviously stones in the way down here. So there will be no uh, firing in that impulse. Or at least not for the red team. So we're done with the red team impulse here in impulse 2. That leaves us with Charlie team. So... We've got Private Walsh with aimed fire, but only if he can see this character up here. And I think we've already determined that he can't, that this is in the way. So no. Rapid fire for Corporal, and he can't see anybody else, obviously. Corporal Thomas has rapid fire, but again, only if he can see anybody, he can't. And he has no chance of spotting anybody else. That brings us to Private Stubbs who has run and gun, and he can see all three uh, characters, as we already determined, two of which are spotted, which means he can shoot at either one that he wants. And I'm going to have him shoot at the one that's sprinting here right in front of him. 
So this will be our first fire uh, mission. Private Stubbs is using an M1 Garand. And on the M1 Garand chart, the maximum range is 50. He's only shooting two, so he's okay. But with a range of two, he gets a plus one modifier for range. So it's plus one for the modifier. The character is sprinting in the field. And just like with spotting, there is a chart for determining modifiers. Sprint in the field is zero, so we're still at a plus one modifier. But the order itself, run and gun, his run and gun order has, whoops, I'm sorry, a minus two modifier to his weapon skill. So we have a total of a minus one modifier on a weapon skill of five. Meaning, and then on top of that, an M1 Garand has a rate of fire of one, which means he gets one attack. So we need a five or a less. And we get a four. All right, so that's a hit on the sprinting soldier, which means now uh, we get to see how uh, hits and maybe wounds are, are uh, taken into effect. When a character is hit, the first thing you do is draw a friendly card, but you look here and for the wound resolution. This says close call MC, which means morale check. What that means is, is that we take a close uh, a morale check on that soldier against his troop quality, which is five. There are no modifiers at this point. We roll, it is indeed a five. So on a morale check where it passes, nothing happens. And because that's all it was, was a close call, that's it. There's no further uh, um, penalty. The last thing we're going to do here <clears throat> is Private Stubbs can still see that sneaker in the field. So we're going to do another spot check. That is three hexes. That's a plus one modifier. He's sneaking in a field which is minus two, which brings us down to a minus one modifier on a six uh, troop quality. So I need a five or a less for a successful spot. And I roll a four. So we've got another successful spot. We'll go ahead and flip this. And we have another soldier that is now known. We've now got five uh, enemy characters that are known and five enemy characters that are not known. That's the end of Charlie Team's Impulse, which means it's also the end of Impulse 2. And we'll pause here for just a second before we come back for Impulse 3. Okay, uh, we're back for Impulse 3. Uh, we've got five spotted and, and or five known enemy characters, five unknown enemy characters. We have one spotted friendly character and still five unspotted enemy or friendly characters. So, Impulse 3, we start with the blue team, which means, again, we'll start way up here uh, with this character. Uh, for the third Impulse, his uh, order is zero, so he doesn't do anything. <clears throat> this character here has run and gun, uh, and in the third Impulse, that's a move. So he moves into the stones. He cannot see uh, Private Stubbs, which is the only spotted character. So therefore, there's no line of sight. We don't have to worry about changing of orders. And there's no chance of spotting anybody. So again, we move on. Next, we have this character. Aimed Fire is his order. And for Third Impulse, that's a zero, so nothing happens. And let's just take a quick check and see. I believe uh, we determined that there was no line of sight because of the stones, and there's not. That brings us down to sneak at zero. Uh, he doesn't do anything. However, he has line of sight to Private Johnson, and he also has line of sight 
to Private Goldstein. So we're going to go ahead and do a couple of spot checks. Private Johnson is four spaces or hexes away. That's a plus one modifier. He's also doing run and gun and hedges, which is a zero modifier. So between them, we have a plus one modifier on a troop skill of four, we, which means we need a five or less. It's nine, no spotting on uh, Private Johnson. It is also four hexes to Goldstein with plus one. Run and gun, this time, however, in a tree is still zero. So again, it's plus one. We need a five or less. We roll a nine again, so no spotting. Last for the blue team is uh, Soldat Schultz. And it's a run and gun, which is a one. And it's in direction six, which goes right here. All right. He's definitely got line of sight to here, line of sight to here, and no line of sight to Private Miller because there's a little bit of the tree in the way. So again, we'll have two spotting checks. They're both two hexes away, which means in both cases it's a plus one. And we've already determined that in both cases their order and terrain modifier is zero. So in both instances, we get a plus one modifier. His troop quality is five. So uh, we're going to do Private Johnson here first, six or less. That's a six. Private Johnson is now spotted for real. And now we'll go after Private Goldstein. The roll there is zero, so that's also a spot. Okay. So, uh, that's the end of his impulse, and that's the end of blue team impulse. That takes us to Baker team. All right, we have run and gun. Uh, Private Miller is going to move up one here to the road. He's already spotted. He's behind the house. He's got line of sight here for sure, but not here, and none of the ones behind. So we do a spot check here on one, two, three, four, five, six. That's no modifier for distance. Aimed fire in the rocks means he has a minus three modifier. So it's minus three on a troop quality of four. We need a one, and we get a one. So, <clears throat> this character up here is now spotted, and that's uh, Soldat Pole. So he's now spotted. <clears throat> We're getting to the point where just about everybody is spotted. Only four germ uh, enemy characters remain unspotted. Three uh, U.S. or friendly characters remain unspotted. <clears throat> All right, we have Private Goldstein. I'm actually going to have him move back one into the trees, and he becomes unspotted. And now Private Johnson. We're going to have him move up one to here. Uh, there's no line of, He's already spotted, so we don't need to spot there. And I don't know if there's a line of sight here. There's not. This hedge is in the way. So he's done. That's the end for Baker team. We now move to the red team in, in, in Impulse 3. Uh, this soldier up here has uh, aimed fire, which is zero, so nothing happens. Uh, here we have run and gun in direction five, so he moves down one. No, uh, no, no uh, line of sight anywhere. He's got a sneak, which is zero, so he doesn't do anything. Okay, but here's something that's going to happen. We've got... Sold at Winkler, he's got sprint, so he moves two, one, two. He ends up now in the exact same hex as Private Stubbs. By rule, when uh, two or more characters on opposite sides end up in the same hex, they both change their orders 
from what it was to melee. Okay? So they both get a melee order instead of the orders they used to have, and that melee attack will have to take place here uh, shortly. Melees only take place in, in impulses two or four, so we're actually not going to have anything happen here. That, however, does end that red character's impulse. Uh, and we have aimed fire, which is zero, so his impulse is also over. That brings us to Charlie Company. Or Charlie. We've got Private Walsh uh, has no line of sight here because of this hedge. However, Corporal Thomas absolutely has line of sight here. And so Corporal Thomas is actually going to get a shot before any melee takes place. Now, Corporal Thomas, we'll take a look here, I'll show you. His icon for the gun tells us he's using the grease gun with a skill of five. What does that mean? Well, it's a different uh, gun on the chart. It needs to be within a range of 12. He's only two away. Two away gives him a plus one modifier, but rate of fire is three. He actually gets to make three attacks, one at a time. All right, the enemy soldier, well now hold on here just a second. I'm just wondering, I think in melee rules, there is a rule that says you can't fire into a melee combat. Let's see here. A hex with a melee marker on it may not be fired into by either side. So he doesn't get to fire. He doesn't get to do anything. So that's it for uh, Corporal Thomas. And Private Stubbs now has a melee order, uh, which is a zero for Impulse 3, so he's done. And that's it for Charlie Company. And that's it for Impulse 3. We now move over to the fourth and final Impulse here in Turn 2. First up is Blue Team. Start up here, we have a sneak in the 5 direction. Absolutely no uh, line of sight. We have Run and Gun here, but he can't see anybody. So he moves in direction 4. And he still can't see anybody. We have aimed fire here. Now, he can only shoot at something he can see. A spotted character. This character is spotted, but he's behind the hedge. Private Goldstein is spotted, but he's behind the tree. And Private Johnson is spotted, but he's behind the house. So he can't fire, meaning he can't do anything. We have this character here, which is Sneak 5. He moves up. Um, he has no line of sight, I don't think, over here. No, there's a tree in the way. But he absolutely has line of sight to Private Johnston, except Private Johnston is already spotted, so there's no need to do a spotting check here. Finally, we have Soldat Schultz. He has run and gun, which is one. Unspotted, so he can't shoot there. Can't shoot here because he's behind cover. Can't see him. He can't see Private Stubbs because of the tree, but he almost cer he certainly can see Private Johnson. So we're going to have a shot here. Now, the German soldier here uses the CAR 98K weapon. Range is 55, well within that. It's a distance of 2, which means he gets a plus 1 modifier, but he only gets 1 uh, shot. So uh, I'm just going to look up the German running gun to make sure it's not any different than the friendly. Yeah, we're good. So it's a plus one modifier. Uh, the target is running gun in a hedge. 
So the modifier there is minus one. So the modifiers cancel each other out. So it's a straight weapon skill roll. His weapon skill is four. And we roll a five. That's a miss. And that's the end of... Well, actually, no. He also gets a spot check over here. That's a distance of two, which is plus one. Run and gun in the open. That's a plus two, so he gets a plus three. And his uh, troop quality is five, so he needs an eight or less. He gets a one, so that's absolutely a spot, <clears throat> which means he becomes spotted again or now as well, which means all of Baker Company is spotted at this point. But we are done with Blue Team with Impulse 4. <clears throat> Next, we have Baker Team. These guys here. I'm going to start here with Private Miller. He can absolutely see this guy. Uh, can't see here because of the rocks. He can also see here. So those are the two enemy soldiers he can see. Can't see there, I don't think. There's a little bit of the tree in the way. So his choice is to shoot here or to shoot here. Now in the end, they've both already acted this impulse, but I'm going to shoot here because he's closer. So that's a, a distance of two with an M1 Grand. That's a plus one range modifier. The character is run and gun in the open. That actually is a minus one modifier. So the modifiers cancel out. It becomes a weapon skill roll. His weapon skill is four. The roll is three, so that's a hit. All right, we get to go through the hit procedure again. Let's see if something different happens this time. We draw our card, and it comes up KIA. That means exactly what it says. That soldier is considered killed in action, so he has moved off the game board. I will get points for that. And his spot is replaced by a KIA marker. All right. Uh, he can't see any unspotted, so there's no spotting going on. Next, we have Private Goldstein. He can't see anybody to fire, so he must must move and he moves up into the tree and now he has a spot uh, chance on this soldier here that's a range of three which means the uh, modifier is plus one the soldier has a sneak in the hedge which is minus two so that's a minus one overall modifier on a troop quality of four we need a three or less we roll an eight so no spot. That leaves us with Private Johnson. He has no known characters in line of sight. And so he's going to move up. I'm going to move him right to here. His only unknown line of sight is that same uh, enemy character there that's sneaking. It's a distance of two, so he gets a plus one modifier. But sneaking in hedges is a minus one modifier, so it's a straight up troop quality check, which is five. And he gets an eight, so there's no spotting there. That's the end of Baker Company. Next up is red. And we're going to see something new here in a few seconds. First, we have aimed fire. He absolutely can see private stubs, but remember, uh, nobody can shoot into a hex if there's a melee happening. So he can't do anything. We have a sneak four, so he moves here. Our only unspotted friendly characters are over there. Behind the hedge, no spotting. All right, we have run and gun from right here. He cannot see any of these guys because they're behind rocks, so he can't shoot. So he has to run in direction 5. And there's still no spotting going on. We have aimed fire from here. He can't see anybody because of the rocks, so he does nothing. Which leads us to this area right here. 
We have two characters. It is a melee, is what's on the uh, counter. I'll show that to you. See how it has M in the second and fourth impulses? That means we have a melee attack. Now, to do a melee attack, and basically neither soldier can leave that hex until one side or the other is uh, dead. To make a melee attack, you make a troop quality check, uh, which can be modified by morale or wounds. And if you're successful, a hit is scored. So the red team member gets to make a melee attack with a troop quality of five, so I need a five or less. I roll a nine. That is a miss. Now, unlike a regular fire, a nine does not do anything about ammo. There is no effect. So his attack is finished. And red is finished. We now have Charlie Company. We have aimed fire. Um, but he can't see there. He can see here. But again, he can't fire into a melee hex. Which leaves Private Stubbs meleeing against back to the enemy character. It's a straight troop quality check. In this case, Private Stubbs is a six, so six or less. And he rolls a one, so that's a hit. If it's successful, you go ahead and uh, draw a wound card. And in this case, it's bad wound. Now, this is not something we've seen before, so we'll go through the procedure here. When you get hit with a bad wound, the first thing that happens is a bad wound marker is placed on your, on your character. And there are several modifiers here. Uh, minus three to leadership, minus three to troop quality, minus three to weapon skill. Now normally, if you're hit by gunfire or grenades, you also then have your order changed to duck back. However, in the case of a melee attack hit, you do not receive that duck back account. But you also then take what is called a, a wound morale check. And hold on here just one second. I'm trying to remember if the, if the troop quality is reduced by the wound, and it's got to be. So that's a minus three on the troop quality. He started out as a five, so he needs two or less to succeed. He rolls a one, so he succeeds on the wound morale check. However, succeeding on a wound morale check still reduces your morale by one. Now, his morale was normal. The next lowest morale is, I believe, cautious. But let me just look up for that to be certain. Yes, cautious is next. And so I'll show you the cautious marker. Cautious marker has further uh, modifiers. Now... So we'll go ahead and put that modifier there as well. Uh, his total troop quality modifier right now is minus four. He started out with a troop quality of five. If an enemy character reaches a troop quality of zero or less, he's dead and out of the game. Uh, if a troop quality reduces to zero exactly for a friendly character, He's basically unconscious. In order to die, his troop quality has to go below zero. Right now, that soldier in the melee is at a troop quality of one, so he's still good to go. That is the end, however, of Charlie team, and that is the end of the impulse. And since that was impulse four, that's the end of the turn. Uh, taking a look at our end of turn, uh, information, no grenades, no medics, no plan orders, no smoke, no waiting characters. Remove the orders is next. So we'll go ahead and get rid of all of our orders. And I'm just going to grab them all, sort them out later.
Sorry for taking so long here. Now, I'm removing the morale orders from these two guys. However, next turn, uh, if that's the only uh, orders they can receive is morale. So, or uh, uh, melee, I'm sorry. Um, reset the impulse marker to one. Move our imp uh, initiative track markers off. It's not the last turn of the game. We'll move the turn marker to three. We will discard our cards. And that is the end of turn number two. All right, uh, got a lot of action there. A lot of things have happened. Uh, a lot of things are still about to happen. We, uh, we have two unspotted friendly characters. We have four unknown enemy characters. So, along with five known enemy characters and four spotted friendly characters. Uh, action's heating up. Things look like they could get uh, a little even more hairy here in the next round. So come back and rejoin us here in a little bit for turn number three.